Yeah, welcome back to the show. You're still watching Afia Morning Show, reaching you live from Enugu State. And we do apologize for that rather long break. We're trying to resolve some issues which have finally been resolved. I am Napali Uku, and I'm going to be your host on this really interesting ride. And as you know, I never do this alone. I'm here with none other than Oji Wachiku. Oji, good Oji morning. Wachiku. How are you? Fine. I'm okay, and good morning. This How morning, you're not, you're not, you don't seem to be smiling this morning. What's going on? Am I not smiling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're smiling, but... I'm not smiling, right? How is the well, economy treating you? Uh, um, uh, <laughs> okay, economy is treating me the way economy is treating everybody else out there, and it's not funny. But we always, you know, suffer and smile in Nigeria, and I think it's time we have to start holding these leaders accountable and do the need for and rightful and, you know, lay down rightful policies to uh, um, ease off all the pain and alleviate the sufferings of the common man right there in the streets. All right. I mean, that's all Nigerians hope for at this point in time. Nigerians are also Definitely. touring this line. They're tired, they're frustrated, but President Tinubu is still saying, hold tight, be hold patient tight. with the administration. For how long? That That's is the question. question. How long are we really going to be patient? But let's just have hopes that this renewed hope is actually going to come to pass in the short run, not the long run this time around. Very quickly, let's see what's happening on our national dailies. And these are some of our top stories. As usual, we'll start with the Daily Times. Tinubu's early era records, Nigeria's highest inflation rate in 18 years. Food inflation increases by 4.97% to 26.98%. Google gives Nigeria 1.2 billion naira for jobs. This morning, business day. Fresh pressure on Tinubu as power sector nears collapse. And on the punch, 6.9 billion procurement fraud. Federal government arraigns a mafia ally Thursday. Suspended CBN governor allegedly bought 100 vehicles through employees. Niger echoes tightened sanctions. Junta demands power supply. On biz, um, Daily Independent, by the way, right? Daily Independent. No plan to raise fuel price. Reverse deregulation presidency. Says PMS consumption has dropped to... 46 million liters per day, alleges gross mismanagement in Central Bank of Nigeria. FG dissolves advertising panel over all eyes on the judiciary um, billboards. And on The Guardian, federal government in deregulation dilemma as 24% inflation worsens poverty, fresh concerns over cost relevance of NYSC scheme in lean times. Nigerians may wait longer for Tinubu's cabinet despite hasty screening. Moving on to Daily Sun, fuel price, taxes won't go up, says the FG. Alvan Ikoku, panel indicts Okorocha for forceful accusation of land. Um, terrorism, Castina tops list of IDPs in North West, um, says the UN. Gov government cries for help. Cool. Leave sanctions on Niger. Northern leaders tell Tinubu Ekoas. Nigerians knock FG over clampdown on all eyes on the judiciary billboards. And on blueprints, as inflation surges to 24.08%, Tinubu and NPCL rule out further fuel price hike. NLC strike threats premature credited to the federal government. And also, Small-scale industrialists make case for own refineries. Federal government files 20 new charges against the Mifiele, clarifies court's order. Moving on to the nation. Uh, Tinubu, petrol price won't go up. Subsidy removal stays. We will end inefficiency. President, level strike threat premature. You can catch all these on our dailies this morning. Business Day, Daily Independent, Daily Sun, and the nation and for mondos grab copies of the daily times the guardian the punch and the definitely the blueprints mm. and of course you know to analyze some of these dailies we have a very special guest in the studio none other than the ceo of journalist 101 mr clinton Ome, and he's going to be telling us his thoughts on some of these very topical headlines thank you for joining us mr clinton yeah good morning Natalia. good morning good morning OG. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now 
forget again, OG, the OG. big tree. Yeah. <laughs> the oh, the oh, Iroko. Wow. Yeah, the, the Iroko, Iroko tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep <laughs> that, that in mind. That was a note. <laughs> that was a cola note. See, I, I, I just, I manage my coffee. Mm -hmm. The day I try cola note, I don't think I'll sleep in three oh, days. Wow. But I've heard the, stories. The OG is the Iroko tree. I've heard tree, stories. The Iroko tree, uh, uh, not the, 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 the cola note. Yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll give it a try one day, perhaps. But, uh, please do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's talk about this one on The Guardian, right? Fresh concerns over cost, relevance of NYSE scheme in lean times. I'm now wondering about how much money Nigeria has. Because when we try to start discarding things or schemes or even, is, let's talk about the street part of it or street sense. When a man starts or a woman starts to sell his or her belongings, it means that cash is lean. So I'm worried about the financial stability of Nigeria if we're now wondering about the cost of NYSE and its relevance, as if we're trying to discard certain things. I'd like to know your reaction to this one. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> if they want to discard NYSE because of costs, that is the most absurd thing to say. If they want to discard it because of the, if it is still relevant in this time, I could listen to them. But, what, but if they talk about cost, then it means this government, anything that will benefit the masses, because some persons, that one year buffer is like one year to stop collecting money from their parents. That's a 30K. Now, they want to even take it away. But if they're talking about that the relevance is no longer there, I will, I will agree to reasonable extent. But they shouldn't tie it on cost. When less than 500 men are sharing almost 70 billion, and then over how many million youths cannot be allowed to share the same amount of money? Doesn't make any sense. However, if they even said this, I don't know when you served, if you served. When I served, there was a fraud due to my own set. That till date, uh, but this, um, um, my Ibo man, who, when he was the commander, um, commander general of NYSC, or, or DG, sorry, of NYSC, I, I forgot his name, but his mom is, a, is German. The man introduced the NYSC, um, uh, as it, whatever, whatever fund. And each comma was made to pay 8,500 in my set across the country. That was the end till today. So if they want to even talk about scrapping that thing, they should look into that fraud that was done in my own time and maybe balance my money with some interest. Because the value then and now is no longer the same. So the NYC thing, to me, it has lived its usefulness. But it can be reprogrammed to serve another purpose, rather than scraping it off. Because when you talk about scraping it off, what happens to all the staff of NYSC? All comes of them, where do you take them to? Do you take them to police, or where? I mean, those are the questions, Mr. Yeah. Clinton. But the question I also have is, financial stability of Nigeria. Why are we in this situation? Where is all the money going? Well, I mean, and even the one trillion <laughs> saved from subsidies. Yes, <laughs> where no, is all know, this? That's all we heard, right? You know, um, According to one, one, um, one, million, one of sorry. my friends, he said that you don't, you don't rule a nation on impulse. You can't come up and say you took the courageous step and say somebody, somebody is gone. And when we talk about the money in Nigeria, what we had, according to, the, according to one, of, one of the presidential candidates, is spending problem, not the money issue. Up to today, this court and have not told us how they will cut costs on their own part. Up to today, all the offices and their panaferia, they are all running to date. The uh, office of the, of the first lady and the office of the second first lady, they are all running. So they are not even doing anything to save. Now, about Nigeria being industrious, yes, we are. But there is this funny thing. We can easily tweak our situation because our exports is even bigger than our imports. However, what are we importing, what are we exporting, that is the issue. But when we talk about the volume of the net, our export is bigger. How, let's say, for instance, if we want to have a breakfast at this table now, and when you have your meal, you are this and this and this and this, you ask yourself, how many of them are imported? How many are made from Nigeria? You will find that over 70% of our breakfast are imported. So we import what we shouldn't import. Our, uh, are you aware that now we import Gary to this country? Mm. Gary? I mean, those are fresh concerns for me. This is not palm oil, well, Gary. These are you, things we should when not you, be When you want to think it is even making, not making any sense, some more than I was in Abuja some time ago, and I could see 
imported water, water. And I was like, what kind of nation survives in this manner? And that is why our narrative is on, uh, is on a free fall. Because everybody wants to save his money in dollar. Because they don't have any trade in the currency. Mm. So what we spend our money on to import is relatively what we can have solved here. So if we solve our, our security problem and our farmers in the farms can farm and bring out their products, most of these things we're talking about. Because our, take for instance, our salaries are not, are not put in dollar. So if your food is cheap in Naira, you don't have any business with the rates. So you now begin to talk about, okay, they tell you what are we making money on the effects on. Okay, our fuel is being stolen and we're not even missing our quota. Yes, why is the food being stolen? Which people are stealing it? As that today, is it not ironic that a full ship, you know, how, you know how big a ship is, that a full ship will enter Nigerian water, come in and go, and our navy cannot even detect it. Oh, apparently, and, they catch them outside. <laughs> outside of, <laughs> no, you know the, the, the funny one, there, there was one that said mm. that they pursued they one to Angola. Mm. How possible? As in, and you'll be asking me, like, how did this happen? So a serious government, like, if the president is serious, if you have a tactical team that will report to you directly, not to the never the Navy general officer, but to you, the president, and have surveillance on all our water, and to make this work, you can say that the movement of ships must be between 10 to 1. So that if you see another ship moving outside this time, you can ask questions. It was most of these ships leave, leave our shores in the night and they tell, they tell they, they, they're not aware. And it's morning. Is it like a big ship? Just like telling you that a car entered there, you didn't know. Mm. How, how is that possible? So we have issue of one corruption or seriousness on the part of the leaders and then ineffectiveness. So them are as clueless as anything. You, they removed subsidy and began to think of how to bring palliative. No, no, who does that? The palliative measures that should have been in place before you remove the subsidy. Now you, you could hear the um, um, uh, uh, the spokesman saying that there will be no further increment. Is that, that will be clever I have. You told us that the market is that the price is market driven. So if you say authoritatively that there won't be further increase. Does that Clinton, mean? Th those are the questions. Yeah. You know, th this is a very, very controversial one because if the, the price of petrol is being yeah. determined by market, market forces, forces so how can you authoritatively come say out and say it will not increase? That, that is it, and that's why Nigerians are still concerned. No, it, you know, mm. we, we've always said that eh, these leaders, I, that one, most of them come in there to answer the name and nothing more. It was more of winning elections. Yes. They politicking. Nothing more. Mm. If you listen to Adjunan Ad Ingelari yesterday, you'll be asking, would they want to do what happened in Kenya? Because you know, in Kenya, subsidy is back. They have yeah, yeah, well, I've seen the conversation here yesterday, and I, I, and I, 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 I said, what if the, the way forward is reverting this subsidy? That's not the way forward, actually. I'm just, I, I was just asking, what if, since it's almost three months now, no subsidy, no aid, no help, and the common man right there in the street is suffering. What if the only option we have now is to revert? And uh, as of today, the, the, the Daily Independent are talking about Nigeria, they have actually ascertained the, the right liters of PMS we consume in a day, and which is 46 million. See, eh? one is, on what parameters did they use to do this assertion? We are a country that has a, a data problem. We are in continuous enmity, enmity with data. We hate data in this country because the next man doesn't, know, doesn't want you to know what's happening in his own office. So he will give you that false data or no data. And then the numerator that I sent to the field to go and get this data will go there, estimate, and come and tell you, oh, this is what I have. So that even the own, when they say 46 million, I will still argue it. It's not considered up to that. I will see, and now they are saying that they are doing this estimation at a time most of Nigerian cars are parked in their houses. They are still consuming 46 million liters per day. So, so the, 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 the figures they used to work out this for 6 million, how did they arrive at it? And there was a rumor, well, it, it was in the, in, in the space, right, that they were considering having a temporary um, return of subsidy. For no, the, if you return subsidy right now, eh? 
what they have done is to just one step forward, one million step backward. What I would even solicit or advise from a labor point of view, which I've, I've always said, that first, we have to ascertain the amount of, or the volume of oil we consume yeah, daily yeah. in Nigeria first. When you estimate, when you ascertain that, you can now deal with the issue of smuggling. Remember, immediately our FWEP, something was removed here. Niger, because all these places started having serious high issue, yeah. in their own mm. petrol price, meaning we were we subsidizing for them the way and for ourselves. Yeah. So if we're able to, first of all, deal with our border issues, it was, when you look at the Nigerian border, all, the, all those country borders, you'll be like, ah, uh -uh, where's the border? They're yeah, very poor, Rosa. Yes. Like, well, it's not border, some of them are covered. Yeah, uh, some of them are just planks. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just like, I mean, sometimes you look at these things and just like, are we moving forward or are we reverting? I'll take it to what one of my lecturers said in university then, Professor E.K.S. Ndolo. He said, Nigeria sometimes has, doesn't want to move forward. It's either we're moving front, back, left, right, but we're just, you know, in circle, circling in around, around yeah. and not yeah. really coming up with something. You remove this, then you start considering bringing it back, and then it's just confusing. But because of time, we'd have to leave it at that for now. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Clinton, for joining us. Thank you.